Welcome back. This is Washington Watch. I'm Tony Perkins. The website, TonyPerkins.com. To stay connected, text the word STAND to 67742. 67742, the word STAND. That way you are connected with us when things are happening and urgent. We can uh, we can contact, especially if things are happening in your state. And we have uh, coming up a nationwide Pray, Vote, Stand Town Hall, the way forward, coming up on February the 10th, 7.30 Eastern Time will be uh, live at Cornerstone Chapel in Leesburg, Virginia, but you can join from anywhere. We'll be taking your questions. And so uh, to find out more about that, text the word STAND to 67742, and we'll be sending out information in the coming, few, in the coming days. Okay, um, if I were to ask you, what, what would you say is the, the, the biggest issue we've got to address right now? I know there's a lot of them. Uh, but when you look forward into the future, what do we have to fix? Well, recently I was meeting with the, uh, the leadership of the Republican Study Committee, which is the, uh, the largest uh, conservative caucus in the House, uh, 200 members strong. And let me tell you what, they're on top of this. I think they've got an outstanding agenda. And at the top of the list is what I think would probably be the number one concern for most Americans. And here to talk about it is the chairman of the Republican Study Committee, Congressman Jim Banks. He represents the 3rd Congressional District of Indiana. Uh, Jim, welcome back to the program. Hey, Tony. Good to be with you. All right. Let's, uh, I want to go through this uh, agenda, but I want to st- start with uh, topic number one, which I would venture to say is at the top of the list of concerns for voters across America. So what is the, uh, the number one priority for the study committee? Well, Tony, the very first initiative the Republican Study Committee has tackled has been restoring trust in our elections. I mean, the, the, the public polling is astounding that today 48 percent of Americans don't trust the election process in America. So we introduced a bill last week called the Save Democracy Act. There are three pillars of this bill. Uh, Voter ID is one of them. Uh, The second part of it I think is really important when it comes to why Americans distrust elections so much after last November. It's because they went to bed on election night. They woke up the next morning. They have one result. Before they went to bed, a different result when they woke up, they found out that some states and, uh, and areas started, started counting ballots and they stopped counting ballots in the middle of the night. And then they had ballots show up for days or weeks after. So the second part of our bill says that once you start counting ballots on election night, you can't stop. And then the third part of our bill says that at least two representatives of each presidential campaign um, has to be allowed to be on hand uh, while the while the ballots are being counted. So that was the first initiative. The second initiative of the Republican Study Committee is to save the Hyde Amendment. So what's been around, something that's been around for 45 years, right. with broad bipartisan support, uh, now is on the chopping block by the by the Demo- the radical Democrats who control their party today. And that's why 200 of us this week signed a letter that I I circulated that drew a line in the sand and said that we will not support any spending bill that moves forward in this Congress if it doesn't include Hyde Amendment protections, which block taxpayer dollars from going to fund abortions. Uh, Tony, uh, uh, Joe Biden, uh, President Biden, as inauguration last Wednesday, talked about uh, unifying America. He talked about unity. He had a centrist message. There's nothing unifying about doing away with a with a law that's been in place for 45 years with with broad bipartisan support but that's exactly what the democrats are trying to do at the moment yeah i was just talking about earlier in the program with uh, one of your colleagues virginia fox who gave you a shout out um that the uh, today uh, president biden overturning the mexico city policy now forcing taxpayers to fund abortion and organizations that promote abortion overseas and this is something that uh, 77 percent of Americans oppose, 55 percent of Democrats oppose this. So uh, it, it, there is a radical element that's driving the Democratic Party that is out of touch, even with the uh, with a large element of their own party. Tony, every Democrat president since Jimmy Carter has supported the, the Hyde Amendment, even Joe Biden as recently as 2019 
spoke out in favor of the Hyde Amendment. I mean, you have to you have to scratch your head and ask yourself why. Why is this so different today? I mean, we're we're at a different place today than we've ever been before. I mean, yes, Obama was president and he had a Democrat House and a Senate, but they kept the Hyde Amendment even in that scenario. Why is it different today? Why is it why is it the case that 200 of us signed a letter that drew a line in the sand on the Hyde Amendment? When I, by the way, I I circulated this letter and I invited every single member of Congress to sign it, Republican and Democrat, and not a single Democrat would sign a letter supporting the Hyde Amendment, where just a few years ago you would have had many Democrats sign a letter supporting the Hyde Amendment. I think back uh, to my uh, friend and colleague uh, Dan Lipinski, a Democrat, who was defeated last cycle in a Democrat primary because he dared to speak out as a pro-life Democrat. They've they've taken out the pro-life Democrats out of their party, and now we're left with a radical Democrat party where not a single one of them will sign their letter supporting the Hyde Amendment. Yeah, it was interesting. I was reading an article yesterday where Kamala Harris takes res- takes credit for getting Joe Biden to change his position on Hyde. Um, it was the first time I'd seen that, that that was the part of his evolution was her encouraging him. I thought he had done it earlier, but nonetheless, she takes credit for it. I, I want to go back to this election issue, uh, Congressman Banks, because I think this is huge. Uh, I absolutely think this is like... You know, we're, 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 we got to give people hope that when they're putting their ballot into a box, it's going to be counted. Because right now, it's like uh, it's like a bucket with a hole in the in the bottom, and you're pouring water in, and it's going right out. Nobody has confidence in our system, as you pointed out from the polling data. Now, this, um, and we talked about this back in 1996, and, and and I know you've talked to Steve Scalise about this. We had a election fraud in Louisiana, and we actually came back the next two years and did several of these elements that you have presented in your plan. And we've not had uh, voter fraud and irregularities to, to speak of. I mean, there's little cases here and there. But here's my question for you. I think this is outstanding uh, with what you're proposing. What... I mean, knowing that the Democrats control the agenda in Washington, this, though, can be a model for states to pick up and run with certain elements, is it not? It really is. I mean, we we hope to work with states around the country who are serious about this subject, about restoring trust in elections. The Republican study committee, the largest conservative caucus in the Congress. I mean, we've been we've been reaching out to leaders at the state level as well, because you really get a sense. I mean, I was just back home in my district in Indiana for a few days over the weekend. And everyone I talked to, Tony, wanted to talk about this subject. This yeah. is what matters most yeah. to conservatives, to Republicans, because they they lost trust in the election process in November. And they want to know that their vote is going to count when they vote again in 2022. We, we, we're we we're on the, the precipice of winning back the House majority for Republicans, which I still believe we're going to do. But if, if Republicans are so disenfranchised because they feel like their vote didn't count in, in, in uh, November of 2020, they're less likely to show up and vote in 2022 and in 2024 when we win back the White House. So that, that's why these measures are important. Republic, as conservatives, we believe constitutionally the states have authority over our elections. I want to be clear right. from the outset that right. the Save Democracy Act that the Republican Study Committee introduced recognizes the state's authority. And, and uh, the bill is written in a way that, that, that absolutely does that. Now, however, the Democrats have H.R. 1, and it's symbolic that it's called H.R. 1. It's their top priority. And H.R. 1 changes the rules. It federalizes election process, takes authority away from the states, and moves every state in the country toward mail-in ballot processes and all these processes that caused uh, these issues in the 2020 election, they want to change the Democrats want to change the rules to help Democrats defeat Republicans and give them an upper hand. H.R. 1 does a couple of other things that you should be aware of, too. It gives it grants statehood to Washington, D.C., which is clearly unconstitutional, but it would give it would give Democrats two more Democrat senators. And it also provides for public financing of elections, which means that you and I as conservatives would be financing the campaigns of socialist Democrats like Bernie Sanders. And that's what Democrats believe in. Uh, as conservatives, Republican Study Committee, as Republicans, we're trying to lay out a framework 
with the Save Democracy Act that, that's very much a counter to H.R. 1 that, de- that the Democrats are advancing. Yeah, a horrible bill. And, and, and folks, we've talked about it before. We're going to continue to track that because it is a top priority because this is the way the Democrats hope to lock in what they gained this time or what they, however they got it. They got it and they want to try to keep it. Um, so Chairman Banks, knowing that you're I mean, you're not in control here. You don't have the Republicans don't have the the levers to get this through. But in this period between now and when you do get the majority, you're able to educate, inform, and as you talked about, work with states. Will the study committee do? Uh, I know you can't do hearings be, from a standpoint the Republicans can't because the Democrats control everything. But the study committee can do hearings. So are you looking at trying to educate the public more on this issue and how? Uh, states, especially those states that had irregularities in their elections, can fix it with uh, these types of policies? We, we want to do exactly that. I mean, the Republican Study Committee, which is three-fourths of the entire Republican conference, representing uh, with Republican, Republicans of conservative stripes, you know, of, of different, different types. And some of us are more conservative than others. But what, what we have collectively is a powerful force to get out and tell the story. And when, when I took over Republican Study Committee as chairman from my friend and your friend, Mike Johnson, from mm-hmm. Louisiana last term, we talked about how we wanted uh, RSC to be in the fight more. And, and that's never more important than it is right now with the Democrat president, Democrat majorities in the House and the Senate. So it's our job to get out and tell the story. And one thing that we've been trying to do is build our, our, our following on social media. We've been trying to get out and do more media. We've been getting out and trying to do more uh, legislative efforts like the Save Democracy Act and the Save Hyde campaign, uh, you're going to hear a lot more from RSC in the months uh, and years to come as we engage in some of these efforts that we haven't been as vocal in before. See, I think you are on track. I think this is exactly what you need to be doing given this, the, the landscape politically that you're, you're currently in. I go back a few years. I think it was prior to you coming to Congress, uh, but you do know Trent Franks, former congressman from Arizona. He had the pain mm-hmm. capable bill that came about after the uh, the exposure of Kermit Gosnell in in Philadelphia and the, the horrible things that were taking place in that uh, abortion clinic, and and so he introduced that bill in Washington, couldn't get it anywhere. But the education of it, this raising the awareness, prompted states to take action. And so states started passing the pain-capable bill until eventually Washington caught up with the states. So I think you're taking the right approach, and, uh, and, and we want to see states address this that had problems in their election so people will have the confidence that when they go in the voting booth and they vote, that vote will count. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I just want to say, um, as we as we finish our time together, Tony, please encourage your listeners to follow Republican Study Committee on Facebook. I mean, we're putting out a lot of information uh, in, in on, on Facebook, on Twitter, at Republican Study. We're, we're going to be engaged. You're going to hear from us more than you have before. We're going to educate uh, the conservatives nationwide about what's going on in Washington in a way that, that we haven't done as effectively before. There's never been a time that's more important for us to do that than at the, at this moment right now. Well, um, let me just say this. You have an open door here anytime you want to come on and talk about the priorities because I know that the study committee, uh, Jim, under your, your leadership as it was with Mike's, is in good hands, true, solid conservatives, and uh, we want to see you succeed because the agenda you have is good for America. It's good for conservatives. And, uh, and we want it to advance. We appreciate it very much, Tony, and thanks for all that you do as well.